Traffic Jam is on now. We back with another one, man, with my boy Nadine from Daniel's Leather, man. How you doing today? Excellent, excellent. Uh, just coming back from a big show that we did, so now finally the adrenaline is coming down, so it was good. That's what's up, man. So uh, just to get into little things, man. Uh, so do you sell coats or do you have a line of coats? Just to be clear for the audience. No, I make coats and I sell coats. That would be the best way to say it. So yeah, of course we have thousands of coats that we like uh, right now we just sat down and we planned 15 other looks, new looks that we're going to have uh, in different colors. So every day we are making coats. That's what we do. And then we sell them. Yeah. So how did you get your start though? Start, I mean, I am an uh, engineer by profession. So okay. a long, long time ago, I was working on a construction project. And uh, one of my friends, he has a leather factory in Pakistan. And he had some coats over here that he was having problems selling. And he asked me if I can do something. It was about like 50 coats. I took them to the construction site. And they were all gone in 24 hours. So it started from there. Wow, that's awesome. So you located in New York, right? Our base store, the headquarters is on 159 Orchard Street in New York, New York, yeah. So uh, who was like the first celeb you, you, you sold a coat to or you styled or made a coat for? Among the very first people, oh my God, uh, we had girls from TLC that had come. They were shooting a video. Uh, Neo, um, Andrew Dice Clay, uh, Bernard Hopkins, Luke Longley. Uh, Jagged Edge, uh, uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's a, it's still a long list, even from that time. So, you, you know what put me on to your coats? I saw a ghost face killing one. Hey, welcome to Traffic Jam. I'm your host, Kenny Williams. And we all remember the 90s hip hop fashion. And um, I'm here with this woman that's described as the godmother of uh, urban fashion, founder, CEO, designer, April Walker. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for that. <laughs> so so uh, let's get to it. How did you get into, I know you heard this at the, what, how did you get into fashion? I fell into it. I was in love with hip hop and mm. it was just something that, um, resonated with me in terms of the music, everything about it. You know, the streets was buzzing with graffiti um, in the 80s when I was coming up. It was just like um, the spirit of rebellion in a good way. You mm -hmm. know, there was a lot going on in our world and and hip hop. The music was like the CNN for me um, around the world. It was able to tell our stories and the stories that no one was listening to. Um, so we had the music and it became a commercially viable business in the 80s, like in a big way. You started seeing Fresh Fest and all these other things and people started hanging out like Amateur Night at the Apollo and all these other ways of happening. But um, there was nothing in the stores that you could go and buy that was our lifestyle. So that resonated with me. And, and um, we found ourselves manipulating clothing that we were buying and like buying them oversized or painting on our jeans and bling blinging stuff out, bleaching them and all these things. But we couldn't buy that. So we started creating it. And it literally came from the creation phase um, to figuring out why we have something here and our tribe confirmed it. And from that, that's how I started my first shop called Fashion in Effect in Brooklyn. It was at 212 Green Avenue. And I was a junior in college when I started that. Wow. Okay. okay. You're watching The Traffic Jam. What, what keeps you, what, what motivates you to not quit, to, to succeed with this? I think it's in my DNA. You know, I think success is like a butterfly. So if you're looking for an arrival point, you know, you'll be disappointed because it's like every stage is a different stage. You know, you arrive on one step and then you realize you want to hit here. And it's, 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 
you think you have it figured out, but as you start and as you start on your journey at different parts in the journey, you see, oh, maybe I'm going to go this way and I like this. So for me, it's like, I think in my DNA, I think I'm a creator, a maker and a creator. I like the art of deals. I like the art of putting things together and watching them grow. Um, and I like seeing something that we take from here and then bringing it to life. So that's what keeps me going. And now um, being able to collaborate with other people that think the same way is really exciting. And also hip hop is such a huge global, um, I want to say, village mm -hmm. that is so many people around the world um that you know we're stronger together so it's such a culture now that you know that itself is is a lot to be inspired by okay so i know like you work with so many different artists from tupac the late alia uh biggie uh jay-z what was there one artist that became like the face of Walkaway? Not say one, but there were a few artists that were like people would say like, "Oh, is it their company or their company?" I remember a uh, Tretch from Naughty by Nature. He was definitely. I used to style Naughty. I had a styling division too. Okay. So besides Walkaway, we had a styling division. So we got to style a lot of these artists and Naughty by Nature was one of our clients. Um, but Tretch particularly, we would put him in this mechanic suit that he would okay. wear all the time and we uh, created that with yeah. him. And then um, um, Run DMC, Jam Master J, God bless the gone, you know, the great Jam Master J, but he was a big supporter. He wore it all the time. So okay. people thought it was his company. Um, Tupac, you know, Biggie, like those were like really diehard staples. And then there were just a lot of other supporters along the way. Yo, it's your boy Marvin Phipps out of Chicago, man. We up doing big things, man, with uh, Kalia Clark. Uh, just excited to be here. Just got a lot of, you know, questions for you, man. Uh, we always hear people talking about their stylists and I just want to get your definition on what is a stylist and what do they do? Um, well, I'm not just a stylist. I am a celebrity fashion stylist who specializes in product placement. So a uh, stylist, there's different types of stylists. Um, you can be a stylist and that works in um, a store, you know what I mean? And then you can, people come in and you style them by like picking out their clothes. I'm um, a freelance stylist, which means I get hired by different vendors to create images for clients, whether it is for uh, an artist that's signed to a label, an artist that's not signed to a label. It could be a regular person, as long as you have a budget, I'm going to style you. And that's picking out clothes. <laughs> that's picking out clothes that I feel like fit your style. And I, I think that you would look good in. So I create visuals through clothes. Yo, that's dope. I that, you, you know, I've been told that my whole life because I will wear the same thing every day. If it was up to me, black shirt and jeans, I definitely need well, I'm the same way. I don't, I don't uh, change my style. Like, it's funny. I'm a stylist and people be like, you are? Because I'm a tights girl with a crop top or a hoodie. Um, and then when I do dress up, people be like, oh, okay, you do get fly. It's because I'm always working and carrying a thousand bags. So I don't really get fly. I get fly enough for me, to, but not probably in the image that, you know, the world would consider me as a stylist. Got it. I just want to know, how did you get started? Like, what what made you start this? Um, I wanted to make my daughter proud. I was a teen mom that didn't have a show. So I literally didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Um, I knew that I loved fashion. Um, I wanted to help my people and I loved designing. You know what I'm saying? Like designers, I thought, 
you know, baby fat was owned by Russell and Kamara. So we're supposed to wear baby fat. We're supposed to wear anything that represents black, right? right? Boo boo. So um, I got into styling. Actually, my homegirl. Well, it's two things. It's, it's, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to sum it up as quick. I was always styling my friends and didn't know I was styling them because anytime my friends would come to my house, I would rechange their whole outfits. I'm like, girl, you need to wear this, put this on. And then I actually worked in the fashion industry. I was interning for uh, Baby Fat. And um, before Baby Fat, I worked for a company named Baller. And um, I started in sales, actually, with this woman, Ozzy Stewart from Full Force Sales. And I was doing that. And I worked with Rough Riders, Dirty Denim Collection. So I I had a way in. I was was more in like administrative and marketing. So I got my first gig with my homegirl, Patty. She was working at Baby Fat. They let me be the uh, venue manager for the fashion shows. And I met this guy. His name is Clifford Ray. And he introduced me, okay. brought me on a movie set for the movie My Brother, starring Vanessa Williams and Tatum O'Neill and Nashawn Kiersey. And um, that day, actually, I had to make the decision if I was going to stay on the project because the person who brought me in had actually lost their job. So they kept me and I was started as an intern and I worked my way up to wardrobe supervisor and I've been styling for the last 20 years ever since. You're watching The Traffic Jam. That's what's up. That's dope. That's that's amazing. That that brings me to my next question. who was the first celeb that you styled? Who was that person? Um, the first person that I ever styled. Well, I was assisting this young lady. Her name was Maxine. And we were doing a King magazine. And it was Jai Ari Parker. You know, the lady with that played in Friday that was obsessed with um, uh, I uh-huh. Yeah, I styled her. That was the first... I don't remember if that was the fir- first person, like first say, but I remember that was my first uh, editorial that I worked on. Right. And then my first celebrity client was JD Williams from The Wire. Wow. Dang. That's, that's, that's dope. Now, this is, I'm, I, it's funny that I went to the high school of art design, right? And I, I, could, and- I, I, I failed. No, I didn't fail. Yeah, no, yeah, I did. I did fail. I did fail because I'm not an artist. They wanted you to do an art. Yeah. Right, and yeah. I, 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 could, I, I wasn't good at art, uh-huh. but I still wanted to be in that school and around the surroundings of, of that. But so I, I wound up going to Bayside High School. Oh, you went to Bayside. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is this. But as far as fashion, what I've seen, what I always felt was scary, even to this day that fashion tend to be very trendy, right? Like if you get into it, it'll change at any minute, like. Yes and no. Okay. See, fashion is, there there are trends in fashion, but the staples keeps you in business. Mm -hmm. The trends is the hype, it's the market. Okay. Okay. The trend. the actual, the trends is the marketing. That's the marketing, right? That person wearing the trend is the advertising. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So this, that's, and so it goes to. Trend. So someone will turn around and go, wow, I want that because someone of stature wore it, right? They can't get that because that's fifteen hundred dollars or whatever, or a price out of their their, you know, their their uh, uh, budget. But they can get the other one, the cheaper one, mm-hmm. and that's the one that everyone buys. Okay. So, so with with with, with fashion, is the the goal to like? Because you see a lot of uh, all these. Um, 
European or foreign, is the goal with your brand, if you're here in the state, is to go international? Uh, that's an, a natural, once your brand gets known to the point that it goes international, you have something. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't look at overseas because they can't grasp overseas. You know, it's, it, it takes a lot. It's because again, when it comes to brands, you have to have a trademark overseas. And that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to make okay. sure you have a trademark and to fight the trademark overseas. So that's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of people overseas in that way. It's more expensive to do a trademark overseas than yes. here? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. We're gonna fight it all over the world, it, and we spend hundreds, of, cups of hundreds of thousand dollars a year fighting our trademark. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Right. So it's not, you know, the average business, you know, fashion business that that starts, they don't have that kind of capital. They're not mm -hmm. doing that kind of numbers to be able to to warrant, you know, doing that. And then after mm -hmm. a while, if they do get bigger, they get to a point where they are get they are bigger. By then, somebody overseas saw them and was like, oh, wow, this might be the next thing. Let me, I'm going to go off and take that trademark. But then, oh. because there's a couple of brands out there that they, they, you, they're huge. And overseas, somebody has a trademark. Okay. And okay. So they, can't even, they can make stuff, but it's like, what? You can't do nothing. Touch, you can't touch me. I own the trademark. You're watching The Traffic Jam. And that's going wow. back to your business. So let me go back to one more thing that you need want to do. Um, the three things of business, pillars of business or, or, or questions of business, how you're going to start. Hey, this time of day, now when I first started, we didn't have this, but one, now you have, get your three things in order. Three things you need to have in order. Trademark, your, I, your IP or uh, IP, uh, meaning, well, not trademark, sorry. Trademark, that IP, um, your um, your um, website, uh, URL, and your business. Now you can do DBA as whatever, but at least you have your, your corporation. Or if you don't have a corporation, you have DBA. You know, there's all sorts of you know. We have to get into the mechanics of what's better or what's not better. Of you know, if you want to, you know, uh, as far as us, you know, constructing a business. But at least your business is a, is done. Once you have your business done, then next, make sure you have your your trademark, and then you have to, and when you have your trademark, you have to have it in commerce. And then, uh, so you can actually get the trademark. A lot of people don't, don't, don't know that until it's time to do it. And then also um, your URL. So if you don't have all three of those strings, or really mostly two, right? You have to do that before you actually start. Once you get all those things, parameters together and you find out that you're ready to start, that's the first thing, the, 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 the third thing you do is make sure you have your URL and your either corporation or if not, uh, and your business. Why is it, why is, so you're saying URL, you, uh, URL or website, why is a URL? URL website, same thing. Okay. URL, your, your actual URL, because soon, think about this. What, I, what I'm gonna say is, for instance, if it's FUBU, right? I wanted to say I started today and I wanted to start a company called FUBU. And I, everybody's like, how are you? What are you talking about? It's never gonna work. Okay, all right, fine. I did went through that. All right, now I'm ready to start. I go online, I go to GoDaddy, I get my URL. Well, no, before that, I go to USPTO.gov for the trademark. First things first, trademark, right? Trademark's available, okay, we'll stop right there. I get another, I open up another browser. I make sure the, um, the um, URL is, is, is available. I get the URL, URL's super cheap, it's not gonna kill you, right? But now, a couple of hundred dollars is for, you know, a bit of a classification you're going to get for USPTO.gov. That, you know, it's a little more, little more hasty when it comes to a, a new business. So you do, you make sure you have the URL first and then you go and get your, um, your, um, your uh, trade bar. And then for that, then you can open up a company. It doesn't really matter what you open up. You can open it up as, you know, the world is mine and then do DBA as whatever you need to do. So it's not a problem. Okay. Okay. So that's last for the first. Okay. So, that's so, last, but that's you know that it's. I don't want to say that either one one is either stronger or the other because they all need to coexist with each other. You're watching the traffic jam. 
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Traffic Jams with your humble correspondent, yours truly, Dr. Dre. And today's show is dynamic, vivacious, invigorating, and glamorous, and you name it, we got the one, the only, East Styles here on <laughs> Traffic Jams. Welcome to the Traffic Jams, E. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I understand you've got an incredible career going on as a stylist and many other things. How did you get started? I um, I bumped into this career actually. I um, I was in corporate. I did the whole corporate world. Uh, went to music and art, and um, and one day uh, while I was on vacation, actually, I had three weeks vacation. And a friend of mine came ringing my bell like crazy. And I'm like, who the hell is that? So it was one of my friends that lives like about four blocks from me, Mr. Roger McKenzie. Shout out to Roger McKenzie. And, Hello, um, Roger. Yeah, Roger, yeah. And uh, so he uh, was like, hey, what are you doing? You know, I, I need someone to help me out. I'm working on a project. He didn't tell me what it was about. He didn't tell me anything. He was just like, here's the script, read it. And I just need you to be there with me for tomorrow. He's like, circle anything that has to do with clothes. I was like, all right, you know, so I circled it. It was like a little bit of like a homework, you know, so I did that. And then the next day uh, I showed up on set and, um, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. You're doing a film. And he's like, yeah, I didn't want to really kind of say anything because I wanted you to do it for you. Not like just because who's in the movie or whatever the case may be. Right. So um, I, I wanted to show up at the film and then it was I, I see like Vanessa Williams walk by and I'm like, great, Vanessa Williams? Are you talking about Vanessa Williams, you know, the singer? Yeah, Vanessa Williams, a singer. Yes. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So she's in the movie. It's called My Brother. So that was my first project. So I kind of started like reverse in this business. I started in film and television instead of kind of doing the regular photo shoot, you know, calendar, music video, right. you know. So I kind of started from up from the top of like film and television. So then everything else became really easy because once you do that groundwork of you know five a.m. call times, ten hour days, and and just having continuity and everything, it, it, everything else was just simple for me. Like music videos became super easy. Everything became easy. So back to the film. So I started doing the film with Roger and, and then I had to make a decision. I had to either go back to work, back to my corporate life or continue filming because the director was like, hey, you know, um, Vanessa Williams really loves your work. You did, you did her, her clothing really fast for the next scene. So, you know, she wants you to stay. And I'm like, what and he was like whatever the the artist wants whatever there's no no whatever the star wants the star gets there we go <laughs> and i'm like okay oh, i'm like, sing you a song watch out <laughs> you know <laughs> so then i was like i was like roger like i don't know what to do because i just came to help you i'm on vacation like i gotta go back to work and he was like you know that's completely up to you i'll support you if you want to do this and um, so i made a decision to stay and i completed the movie by the end of the movie i was the wardrobe supervisor um, also, Kalia Clark was in it. I know that you interviewed her as well. Yes. Um, so it was, it was us. It was Roger, me, Kalia, Dion Stewart, um, and Andrew Caesar. Um, and it's funny how full circle, I just finished The Best Man, the new movie, the new one. The third um, one? The Best Man. So the you've seen the first one. You've seen the first one, right? Right. Uh, so now, we, right now, I just finished shooting The Best Man series. So oh, the okay. series is coming I out. I heard about yeah. that. Yeah, so we've been filming since April. I just finished last Friday, but we've been filming for months. So um, uh, yeah, so I'm back in film and it's funny how I'm, I'm back with Roger, I'm back with Andrew. So the, the crew is like full circle coming back to doing motion picture again, which is great, you know? That's so, great. So I kind of bumped into it, like I said. So to answer your question, I bumped into it. I wasn't even- Congratulations. Looking. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you How so did you much. get involved? How did you get involved with doing wardrobe? So there was all well, you know, there's all different kinds of fashion, right? So there's shoppers, there's you know, set costumers, um, wardrobe supervisors, um, and then you know, just regular styling, you know. Um I I dibble and dabble in everything, so I don't put myself in a box. So I do everything from shopper, shoppers, personal shopping to onset, you know, costumer. So it really depends on the project and what they're looking for. And if I qualify for it and they hire me, then I'm, I'm in it, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm with it. <laughs> what do you prefer? Do you prefer the music video world, film, television? What grabs your 
imagination? I enjoy film more. One, because is constant money, you know, consistent. Um, you, I'm also in the union. So when you're in the union, you you have a great backup, you know. So you remember to say Screen Actors Guild. No, Screen Actors Guild is for actors. I'm okay. in the wardrobe union, which is I-764. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's okay. a wardrobe I'm, union that no one really knows about, which is strange. Oh, I know about that. I was I was thinking because you were with uh, Vanessa Williams, you were acting also. Oh, no, no, no. I, I Vanessa, she was a, a character that played in the film. So she was, you know, she was acting. Um, but so your strength is really wardrobe and styling. Yes. Besides that, I also, yeah. But besides that, I also have another company. It's called Retail Reinvention, um, where I do all of um, merchandising for all the malls. So I work in, in Brooklyn, uh, Long Island. Um, you know, I'm actually going to Kentucky to do their malls. So I open up malls as far as their stores. I, I design them. And I also do merchandising and even the kiosks. I also that, work. That's on. remarkable. Yeah. So you're, you're based on the East Coast then? Yes. You're watching The Traffic Jam. Jam is on now.